all perfumes can be categorized into 14 families. And each one of us live somewhere within that scope. Marcelo Altigheri is my name. I'm the niche fragrance collector and I'm a perfume lover. I sometimes feel that we underestimate or undervalue the power of scent. Because of a smell, it takes us back to a moment in time. It's nice to uh, being able to connect a perfume that actually makes you happy because a particular smell can actually change our mood. So if you have like a beautiful citrus smell, it instantly, what well, makes you think of sunshine, it, it, it livens you up. So let's say that you have discovered that you enjoy perfume, but let's also say that you almost feel that you stay within a realm. So let's say you're a white floral person, you like the smell of jasmine or tuberose, but you also tend to find that you are constantly getting the same fragrances over and over in that sort of, in that sort of genre. Michael Edwards, who's an Aussie, pioneered a concept called the fragrance wheel. And the idea is that he identified that all perfumes can be categorized into 14 families. But to make it a lot easier, these families are broken up into four categories. Ambery, woody, fresh, and floral and each one of us live somewhere within that scope. So if you enjoy a particular fragrance, you've now identified that you fall into a particular family, let's take floral. My recommendation is start exploring, push yourself out, see what else is available to you that is close to that scent profile, but now you, you start to expand in, in, a, in a new area. I've always been into fragrance. I've always been into beautiful smells. And even as a young boy, and I'm talking like a five-year-old, I would steal my father's aftershave. It was a particular brand that I, lo I loved the scent profile of this. Anyway, I would grab a chair, go up, take this perfume, and dad would always like, why stop taking my perfume? The great thing about smell is that there's no gender associated to it. In a way, I guess we've been programmed by marketing and by society that as a man, I should only like woody style fragrances and therefore I shouldn't have anything with florals in that. I disagree. I like the thought of having some florals in my fragrance. I find that a note like rose is beautiful in a man's fragrance. My mission, this is something that I like to do personally, is to explore that whole wheel. I don't want to be told, and that's the South American in me, that I can only play here, which is woods, mossy woods, aromatic fragrances. It's nice to have access to the entire wheel and not being dictated to that I can only play here. I've got access to all of it. The other thing that happens too is that we have to take into consideration our own skin chemistry. So when the fragrance is actually mixed with us, with our own scent profile, our own musk, it does evolve, it becomes its own personality. I've even had situations where I'll spray on a particular fragrance. My son sprays on the same fragrance, the scent is different. I strongly advise whenever you're hunting for a new perfume, don't go by the card. I always find that the card is a great reference marker. But the moment that you smell that card and you're like, wow, I like that scent profile, put it on skin. It's only on skin that you'll be able to understand what that actual perfume is doing and if it works for you. I feel like people have this misconception that there are rules associated to perfumery. There are no rules. There are things in life that require rules, you know? Perfumery is not one of those, you know, but yet everybody wants to put rules against it. What's a good masculine fragrance or what's a good feminine fragrance? And I'm like, you got to get rid of that. Where should I spray? So when I spray, do I rub it? Do I not rub it? Do I leave it? Do, you know, do I spray a mist and do I walk into it? You do you. You know, there are certain things, some guidelines, but there are no rules. 